Uh, it was a great night for me. I mean, I felt relaxed out there. Uh, I had a great training camp. Everything went well. Uh, there's not much to say, just to go out there and have fun. And uh, I know I, I have a lot of power in my hands, so it was a good night for me. Aaron, as you said, uh, not a lot to say. I mean, there wasn't much fight to, uh, to judge in there. But overall, I mean, how did you feel about your performance? Uh, obviously, everybody was uh, incredibly impressed with what you did. I felt great. Um, I just needed, you know, the experience. This whole training camp went well, no injuries, no nothing. So I felt so good coming into the fight, especially being with Antonio, everything just, everything just felt right. I mean, I was, I was nervous, of course, I'm always nervous, but I just knew this was just, I, it's just my time. I feel good at featherweight. 145 is the perfect weight for me. I feel strong, fast, and uh, like I said, if I just need time as I, time is my friend right now. So each time I keep, fighting it's just gonna get better and better so I'm having a good time the body shot was how you ended the fight but it was there early for you as well I mean did you have a feeling that that was gonna be a, a weapon you could use tonight I knew I was gonna knock him out with the body shot I didn't really say it I just knew he was just long lanky I just knew if I got to the inside I've seen a couple of tapes on him uh, he's taking some kicks to the body which he didn't really really like so I knew if I get to the inside on him and I let it rip he's just gonna go down there would be no way he would be able to stand so I showed it tonight you know, as you're developing, I think people, they say, you know, your aggression is, is something to watch, but it's also a little concerning, too. Maybe you're a little wild, maybe you're a little too fast out of the gate. What do you think? Do you think that's something you have to be careful about, or do you feel like that's actually a strength of yours? Uh, I'm, I'm working on it with, with Antonio, my defense, but I'm a fighter. That's just what I do. Like I said, I'll, I'll take one to give five. That's just kind of who I am. And like I said, this is a, a fighting sport, and that's just, you're going to take punches if I take eight years off my life because I took some punches in the, in the cage, I'm okay with that. As long as my family's good and I had a good career, I'm fine with it. But like you said, I need to work on my defense. It's something I work on every day. And uh, I'm a fighter. I'll just go in there and, and fight. Nice. And last thing for me, I mean, obviously you've had these high expectations on you for so long and you're still so young in your career, but where do you feel like you need to go from here? I mean, I mean, are talking about championship fights and contender fights, is, is that silly three fights into your career? Or do you feel like you know, you're already at that level. Uh, it's all up to my coaches, to be honest with you. I mean, my job right now is just to f focus on getting better. I wake up every day, I got to work on being the best fighter that I could possibly be. At the end of the day, I got to sit down with my team and figure out where we go next. I know, you know, being champ of the world, you know, just, of course I'm going to be there for sure, but it, it requires so much. You know, you got to have, you know, you have to be, you take tougher and tougher fights. I'm only 21 years old. It's a lot of stuff going on. So when my team feels that I'm ready to, to fight for the championship, then uh, I'll be more than happy to. But for me, mentally, I'm always ready to fight. That's just, just who I am, so. Aaron. Aaron, right here in the front. Yeah, yeah. First, uh, congratulations, man. Thank you. Um, so when you landed that shot, did, did you know it was over before he, he went down? Yeah, I knew he, I knew he, was, uh, he was out, or it hurt him pretty bad. But uh, I just wanted to just seal the deal. Make sure when the ref pulled me off, then I'm like, okay, then it's over with. But uh, yeah, I knew I, I just felt it. It landed flush on the, on the stomach, and I knew there would be no coming back from it. I knew I was gonna eventually stop him with punches. Uh, the body work in, uh, in MMA is kind of maybe underutilized compared to obviously like boxing. But was that something you were working on with Freddie Rhodes, kind of the, the the left hook to the liver? I've always. Ever since I started boxing, I, knew I had a natural feel for the left hook to the body. So I used to always hit it in practice. Every, all my fights, I, that was something that I was uh, very effective. So I just kept doing it, and that's like, my, that's like my thing. Thank you. What's up, buddy? What's up, Josh? <laughs> you, had a great, you had a great fight tonight, man. It looked amazing. How has Antonio uh, McKee and his camp helped you? throughout not just this the fact that like not just this fight but moving forward or is there anything you guys have talked about on like the gains and things that you need to make in camp yeah first of all with Antonio I mean it goes just beyond training I mean I think he's the best coach in MMA I mean he works I'm with him six days a week twice a day working working but it's just like mentally that he keeps me so relaxed and focused which I'm very thankful for just like I can't really explain it. Just he's uh, a great mentor for me. Talks to me. 
we train. It's just it's just a good little uh, we we met, we click very very well. Have you guys talked about what's potentially next for you and any opponents you guys might be interested in fighting? Uh, no, not no. We haven't really talked about that, but we've already talked about what we got we need to do to get better. And as we were waiting for this, we we were talking about our strategies for for uh, the future as far as getting better, working on lateral movement, certain things that we, that we need to continue to grow as fighters. So. What else? Just besides lateral movement, what else? Tell us. Give us all the good uh, details. No, I can't. I can't. Uh, I'll save it for my next fight. <laughs> all right, brother. Good job hey, tonight. Thanks, Josh. Hey, Aaron. Uh, right here. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, can you compare uh, the knockout punches, Justin Lin, uh, to the jaw versus this one tonight? I'm sorry. Say that again? Can you compare the knockout punches, Justin Lin, versus this one? Oh, for me, a big, I mean, they're both really, really great, but I like this because I'm in front of my home, in front of my friends and family. Um, but the Justin Lin knockout was really good. I don't know. It's just anytime you get a knockout, it's just, it's just a good feeling for sure. And then I noticed you were ringside for Joey Davis's fight. Yeah. Uh, what was that like watching that spinning kick knockout? Did it inspire you, motivate you? <laughs> He lands that in practice on me, and I know I feel for the guy because that thing, that thing is deadly. So I'm happy it, was, it wasn't on me. It was on. He's using it in the, in the fight because I've every time I go with him, I'm always con like it's something that he throws all the time, and if it lands, it knocks the wind out of you because he's landed on me plenty of times. And so when he when when Ian Butler went down, I'm like I feel for you because that thing is deadly. Because like I said, I've taken it before by Joey. Can you explain a little bit? My last question. What you guys have going on there at the body shop with yourself and AJ McKee, Joey Davis under Antonio McKee? Yeah, I think we just all have different styles. We all have uh, different personalities, but at the end of the day, it all it all fits well, just molds well. And at the, and we have we have a great leader, and that's Antonio. He structures practice the way we need to. Be. He, that's his life is making us the best fighters in the world and. If you just show up and you come with your work boots on and give everything you possibly have, Antonio is, Antonio is there for you. We have a great group of guys that, are, that all have different styles, all have personalities, like I said. But at the end of the day, we all hold each other accountable that we're going to be there at practice and we show up to work. And we have something very, very special going on at the body shop. Aaron right here. Uh, that's three fights for you in seven months. I'm curious, would you prefer to make another quick turnaround or would you like some time off before the next fight? I hope I, I, hope I fight soon. I mean, I'm healthy and like I said, time is my friend. I need as much time I, as I can in the cage and I'm, this is what I love to do. I'm healthy. Uh, I make good money. I mean, what else can I ask for? I've got a good life, so I want to keep fighting. I'm very thankful and this is my job. I, I love... I sincerely love my job so anytime I can get back in the cage I'm for it. Seven months ago you learned a pretty tough lesson in your first fight and since then you know two straight knockouts it's been pretty impressive what did you you know looking back on it what's the biggest thing you learned at that fight at, at Madison Square Garden that's helped you in the, the most recent two fights? Yeah for me I mean one is just the weight I, w I was up in weight at 155 and uh, it just I don't know so I just there's so many things that you can possibly say but I just think the biggest thing was just you know it was just not relaxing I mean I just needed to just take my time but everything happens for a reason and so much positives came out of that loss that I'm actually very very thankful for the loss like I'm super super thankful that I lost Madison Square Garden I think it sounds kind of funny to say but if I wasn't in the if I wouldn't have lost I wouldn't have been with Antonio I wouldn't have been at the body shop I probably wouldn't be training with Freddie Roach it just so many things lined up for me that I'm super thankful for the for the loss in uh, Madison Square Garden, but I'm right on track. Hey Aaron, um, your body shop relationship. How are you balancing Aaron Antonio McKee as a trainer versus a father? Because his kids in the gym, same weight class. You guys have an agreement that you will or won't fight each other. What what's the dynamic there? No, no, we've already talked about it. Um, AJ and I won't fight. That's just a given. I mean, AJ McKee and I have been friends since we were little kids. He used to be at my house all the time, spending the night over for barbecues on family trips with us. So, no, that's just, just weird. There's, there's, uh, there's many people in the world to beat up rather than us fighting. It's just not going to happen. So, um, 
So AJ has designs on winning the title. He wants to be champion. Obviously, you do too. If he uh, has that belt, are you going to stay at 45 or are you going to go back up to 50? Well, there's there's things that we've talked about and discussed, but I can't really, I can't say I can't say it now. But bottom line is that we're not going to fight. But I just we've we've had that discussion. and It's not going to happen. Okay, so your regular training partners. What what does he bring you? What's the best thing that AJ does for you? Everything. I mean, he's a problem. To ha he's a funky on the feet. Throws all these kicks. On the ground, he can submit you. I mean, we're just, it's just two different styles. What I have, the, the boxing, the wrestling, him is just the overall MMA, the, the flying kicks, the, fly, the spinning elbows. It's just great. I haven't seen that. I've been wrestling my, for the past couple of years, just nonstop. So perfect training partners for each other. Congratulations, Saren, on a great performance tonight. It meant a tremendous, I would call it the perfect punch to the liver. And, <laughs> Thank um, you. And as we know, when you, when you land there, it's over. Yeah. Um, is there, you know, talking about the body shop, because it's a fantastic group of you there, and it feels like there is a new, there's a paradigm shift, a new group are coming up together. On that subject of you and AJ and Joey Davis, could you predict for us at some point, without putting the words in your mouth, that perhaps the three of you, maybe at one time, may be the featherweight, lightweight, and welterweight champions? 100%. I think that I think that's very well possible in the future. Um, if we all, you know, stick to what we do, train, and be smart about our training and, and follow directions, yeah, we definitely all can be champs of the world. So I cheated the answer out of you there that AJ will probably fight at lightweight then. I don't know. We'll see. But you'll never fight each other. But but it, it, there does seem to be this special group emerging. Yes. Yeah. For sure. I mean. Like I say, we all have different personalities. We all, it's just, we all keep each other accountable. This is what, this is, uh, it's a great, it's a great, I, I mean, I've known them since I was four or five years old wrestling. You know, we've been at the same kids program. So I just feel right at home. Thank you.